Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanjay Rai. I am Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Montgomery College. We are absolutely delighted to partner with uh, uh, DC South Asian Arts Council to bring these wonderful festival and great movies, actors, and directors at our campus, at our region, for our community, and uh, also for our nation. It is my privilege to introduce an individual who needs no introduction, uh, at least on the campus of Montgomery College. Mr. Frank Islam is an information technology entrepreneur who heads the FI Investment Group. He was the founder and CEO of the QSS Group. Mr. Islam immigrated to the United States from India in 1970 when he was only 15 years old. Mr. Islam started his QSS Group in Maryland, a federal government IT service company in 1994 with a $50,000 bank loan, and in 2007, he sold the firm to Perot System Corporation for $250 million in cash. Let's have a round of applause for Mr. Slam. Um, it is more important to know what he has been doing with, with, with his resources. Uh, most recently, his foundation has funded the business school in his alma mater, Aligarh Muslim University, for $2 million. His most important gift is to Montgomery College, where he has established Frank Islam Athenaeum Symposia at Montgomery College for the last four years. In 2013, US President Barack Obama appointed him to the general trustee of the Board of Trustees of John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Frank Islam. Well, Sheila is a good friend, and I know she wants me to be brief, and I will, I will do my best to be brief. So good evening. Uh, thank you, Sanjay, for your kind introduction. You always lift my spirit and my soul. And thanks to Manoj and Geeta for inviting me back to speak again this evening. This is the fourth year in a row that I have had the privilege of addressing the closing ceremony of the DC South Asia Film Festival. Each time I spoke was special for me. Speaking tonight is extra special because of the film festival's focus this year on the empowerment of women, a topic that is near and dear to my heart and, and to my wife, Debbie. I'll share my thoughts on the critical importance of that focus later in my comments. Let me begin here by saying a few words about the festival. In 2014, the first time I participated in the festival, I mentioned the DC South Asia F Film Festival has become one of the finest film festival in the Washington DC area. This evening, as I look around this room, I'm quite convinced and I'm quite confident that you will agree with me on this, that this festival is now one of the best South Asian film festivals in this country, not just this region. <laughs> the way Manoj and Gita have scaled this festival over the year has been truly amazing. What started as a modest experiment has now become an institution of the great repute. I want to congratulate both of them taking the festival to the next height. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> I also want to recognize Gita and Manoj's key partner in putting together this festival for 2018, Montgomery College, one of the finest community educational institution in this nation and the woman in films and televisions India chapter. Dr. Sanjay Rai, a dear and close friend, is here representing the college, and Patrina Di Rosero, who launched and is president of women in film and festivals of India chapter, was supposed to be here, but she's not here. So let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Let me acknowledge 
the following wonderfully talented women who have been able to join us this evening. Namrata Singh Gujral, thank you very much for being here. Candy Clark, Swara Bakshar, and Catherine Han. The great American poet Maya Angelou once said, each time a woman stands up for herself, she stands up for all women. All of you women of films in this audience tonight have been standing up for women for your entire careers. You have been in the forefront of women's empowerment. Being with you this evening, for all of us, is quite inspiring. We want to ensure that the rays of the empowerment that are shining forth here carry back to India and are magnified in 1,000 fold. The magnification must begin with changing the nature of the film festival in India. Bollywood, like Hollywood, remains a male dominated bastion. The woman's place has been in front of the camera. In this 21st century, we need to see more, many, many more women behind the camera producing, directing, writing screenplays, designing sets, performing every job that is required to produce a quality film. That must be the starting line, though, and not the finish line. The finish line is, must be the stories by, for, and about women. That is, that is so because the true power of those in the filmmaking business is in storytelling. For most of the history of the Indian film, there have been free story told about women. And the treatment of women in Indian films has normally fallen into the three S trap. And those S are secondary, superficial, and stereotypical. Secondary, there are few primary roles featuring women. Superficial, women are cast in part because of their beauty or attractiveness. Stereotypical, women are portrayed in a manner that reinforces the culture power structure. This needs to change. It needs to change to enable Indian women to aspire to be whatever they can be. It is important for the future of Indian women, future of India, and future of the world itself. Prime Minister Modi, in November 2017, speaking during the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, said, woman empowerment is vital to India's development. Woman first, prosperity for all. As you all know, the status of women in India is not one of equality. Indian women are far less literate than their male counterparts. Their participation in higher education is lower than males. Only 14% of the Indian business establishments are run by females. I could go on and on with an endless stream of statistics, but I do not believe I need to because I'm certain you get the point. Indian women need to have stories told through film that inform, educate, enlighten, and inspire. These stories will liberate them and legitimize their decision and decision making whether it is to be a homemaker, a skilled employee, or an entrepreneur. My wife Debbie and I place an emphasis on pr promoting education through the arts through our foundation because we firmly believe that this combination is empowering both for the individual and the society at large. As I close here in reflecting on women's empowerment and the role that you as filmmakers can play in the women empowerment in India, let me leave you with this final thought. Nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. It is the time for women's empowerment. Tell your stories now 
so that the Indian women can learn from them, empower those women to write their own stories, use those stories to write more stories. This ensures that the women empowerment cycle will not be broken. It will go on and on and on. So thank you very much for listening to me for all that you do to make India and the world a better place through your artistic endeavors. And God bless you all. Thank you.